everybody, John the Other here, obviously. Now, I have done a couple of videos already about the um, absurd, ridiculous, and apparently ongoing drama surrounding a group, a clan, a collusion of social justice weirdos, and the YouTuber known as Thunderfoot, or Dr. Phil Mason. For those of you who are just joining this ridiculous drama, um, I'll try to just give a really short precis of what's going on. Um, Thunderfoot has done numerous videos criticizing the public antics of feminists, including Anita Sarkeesian, and in response to that, social justice warriors, instead of then criticizing him or attacking his arguments, engaged in a letter-writing campaign, uh, uh, colluded amongst themselves, and then engaged in a letter-writing campaign to his employer, accusing him of being a Nazi and a racist against uh, Islam, and accusing of um, commanding what they called a hate army of Nazis, sent that to his employer with the um, not just obvious, but publicly stated and bragged about intention of, number one, getting him fired, number two, destroying his career and his life. Okay, well, the letter writing was libel, which is a crime, criminal action. So every single person who sent those letters, accusing him of being a Nazi and all this other uh, ridiculous nonsense, is now a criminal, is a person who has committed the crime of libel. Now, I'm not saying that to get everybody all excited and think, oh, hey, John's threatening to send us to jail or whatever, call the cops. No, 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 no. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Um, I am not a tattletale hall monitor. I, I would love to see uh, these people be prosecuted, but that's not because I want to see negative outcomes for people, but for a, 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 a more subtle reason, a more actually important reason. In addition to, and we'll get to that in a second, in addition to individually being criminals and participating in, in libel, uh, there is a, a bragged about conspiracy amongst many of these SJWs that they conspired in advance and colluded with one another to engage in this criminal action, which means that's a, a criminal conspiracy. Um, and then bragged about it in public. And that's the interesting thing. We now have, as a culture, an emerging social norm, and that is that uh, criminal behavior, very serious criminal behavior, including criminal conspiracy, is now, to some degree, accepted as normal, uh, socially acceptable behavior. And that's really, really dangerous, because what these people are is vigilantes. I mean, if, if we have a society where we redress our grievance through, you know, small claims court or more serious grievance through criminal court, you know, like a violent grievance, you know, I'd, somebody does something to me, and instead of going and getting a baseball bat and crushing their head, um, I call the police, and then we go to court. That would be, I think, you know, a civilized and, and grown up and logical way to do things. But that's not what we have happening now. We have instead people um, going around the court system and just creating their own ad hoc solutions to their disputes and grievances. Uh, we have the, these SJWs quite aggrieved that uh, that Thunderfoot um, eviscerated their arguments, made them look extremely foolish and. Um, dishonest, which they are, uh, and instead of then attacking his arguments with, you know, evidence or arguments or persuasion of their own, no, they just decided to uh, destroy his career and life to the best of their ability. Well, they are vigilantes. And so what we have now is the mechanisms of vigilante justice being bragged about in public and probably with no criminal consequence or legal consequence to those people who did that. And that's really dangerous. And the reason is, um, more systems of morality, systems of ethics, evolve, I don't mean evolve genetically, they just evolve socially, through uh, the system of tit-for-tat. So, if I have a, a neighbor who, uh, because he dislikes the color of the car that I drive, or dislikes the music that I play, when he sees me um, in our neighborhood, walks up and punches me in the head, well, pretty quickly, I'm going to punch him in the head. And then we have a, a rolling br rolling brawl happening, and that just becomes the normal way that the, the disputes and disagreements are, are settled, where we all just go start punching each other in the head, and pretty soon it escalates. Somebody's got a knife, and somebody else has a gun. Um, that is how ad hoc justice, or vendetta, 
becomes normal. Um, and vigilante justice is always ad hoc. It's always an improvised vendetta. It's an improvised retribution against some sort of perceived grievance. So rather than having legal standards, rather than having due process and courts and police and a kind of sober and controlled way of dealing with grievance, we just have this emotionally driven, wild, seat of the pants, make it up as you go along vendetta. Um, and that, I think, is now becoming normal. So for all of the Jenny McDermott's and the Jennifer Kellers and the um, and their little f followers, all the little social justice warriors who are so happy with themselves that they've done this, uh, it, it, it quite amazes me that they don't seem to grasp that what they've done by normalizing this is they've declared open season on themselves. So if now if you have a, a, a disagreement with a social justice warrior, you find their behavior objectionable, don't call the police. No. I mean, this is how moral systems evolve. And they have normalized ad hoc solutions to grievance or vigilanteism. They have bragged about their participation in a criminal conspiracy to, to, to seek vigilante vendetta against Dr. Phil Mason. That's increasingly the new social normal. In fact, they are indirectly, or maybe even directly, saying that if you are aggrieved or angered or worked up or in some way offended by the public statements and antics of social justice warriors... What they want you to do, by their example, is engage in uh, an organized vendetta against them of some invention of your imagination. Go to their employers or escalate it. Now, I think this is a very bad idea. I think this is terrible because, of course, when it's just this emotionally driven ad hoc solution to a grievance, it's always going to escalate. It's going to get bigger and bigger, and one person phones another person's employer, and then somebody else finds out where they live, and they smash the windows of the car, and then it gets higher and higher, and pretty soon it becomes interpersonal violence. People begin to get killed. It goes for generations. I mean, this is why, in you know, uh, in the history of Western civilization, we came up with the, this thing called the courts and the system of law, so that we don't have this. But apparently, we're going back to it. Apparently what we're going towards is a new dark age. And it's uh, very clear to me that the SJWs, if what they're doing angers you and offends you, don't go to the courts. No, just model your solution to your anger on what they do. And use your imagination. I mean, dial it up a notch. Now, of course, this is certainly not my advice to you. It's, it's a bad idea because, as I said earlier in the video, the predicted outcome is an escalating culture of violent vendetta. After all, moral systems evolve out of tit-for-tat. Now, I learned that from watching behavioral evolution videos from Stanford, uh, which I'll link below, Dr. Robert Sapolsky. Really worth a watch. Thanks, uh, obviously, for watching, and have a lovely day.